Now let us see that classification or the subdivision of the kingdom plantae. So the plantae is mainly classified into two main groups. Under two main groups you can study cryptogamy and phenerogamy. Cryptogams and phenerogams. So under this cryptogamy what do we see here? The first one is thallophyta, bryophyta, pteridophyta. So these are the three divisions we see here. The thallophyta, it is it comes under the plantae but it has got a very basic structure. The body is not well defined. Differentiation is not done. That means plant, if somebody says plant, if I say plant, what do you imagine? You imagine a stem, root, leaves, flowers, fruits, buds, everything. So that is a well differentiated plant. But whereas here thallophyta is a plant which is not having any special structure like root, this is root, this is stem, you cannot differentiate. It will be like a green filament. So generally what do we call these green filaments as algae? Multicellular algae comes under this thallophyta. There whereas in protista we studied algae that is unicellular algae. In protista, unicellular algae they fall under protista but multicellular algae that comes under this thallophyta. What are the multicellular algae? Spirogyra, Chara, Cladophora, Eulotrix. Eulotrix, these are the multicellular algae which have many cells. Spirogyra filaments are there. You can find the spirogyra filaments in water tanks. You can observe them under a microscope. You will find some kind of structures in that green filaments. Those are the multicellular algae which fall under this thallophyta. So the next group is the bryophyta. If you see the bryophyta here, there is a little differentiation in the body. Not like thallophyta, they have some distinction. But they do not have an actual special tissues for conduction and all. Bigger plants, they have xylem and phloem tissues for conduction of water and mineral salts. We studied this in the chapter of uh, tissues. But such kind of special tissues are not found in bryophyta. So there is no special tissue for conduction of water and food in bryophyta. But they are somewhat look like some plantlets, tiny plantlets, right? So what are the examples? Moss, funeria. Funeria is called as moss in general terms, machantia. So these are the examples of the bryophyta. And this thallophyta, bryophyta and the third one is pteridophyta. The third one, let us see what is the development here in pteridophyta. We found some development from thallophyta to bryophyta. Now let us see what is the development in pteridophyta. Here you see the roots, leaves and stem. The body is differentiated into stem, root and leaves. You can see them. They have special tissues for conduction of water. So that is the improvement from this thallophyta. But what these three have in common to keep under cryptogamy? Why this thallophyta, bryophyta, pteridophyta are called as cryptogame? Means they must have something in common. Otherwise, they are not kept under one group. What is the common? The common thing is the mode of reproduction. They have naked embryos. They have spores for reproduction. So all these three, they have spores for reproduction. Among these three, these two do not have a differentiated body structure. What is that thallophyta, bryophyta? Pteridophyta is having a well differentiated root system. That is a root stem leaf distinction is there. But however, they reproduce by spores, all these three. And the examples of pteridophyta are marsilia, ferns, horsetails. Ferns, we see ferns and uh, marsilia and uh, Horsetails, ferns are seen in the bushes in the rocky areas. You find small plants. Do not they do not bear any flowers. So that is, they bear the spores on the underside of their leaves and they reproduce by the help of these spores. So the embryos are seen outside. That characteristic is called as the naked embryos. That is called as cryptogam, cryptogam. So that is the naked seeds. So now let us go to the next one, phenerogamy. Phenerogamy consists of two kinds of things, gymnosperms and angiosperms. The angiosperms divided to monocot and dicot. So here you find the real plants and trees, what you see around you. The bigger trees and plants, the fruit plants, flower plants, the grains, paddy, vegetables and different kind of plants and trees, what you see, which have commercial usage, all those plants, they come under this. 
Now let us see why they are called gymnosperms and what comes under this and uh, let us see what are angiosperms and what comes under that. So now let us look at that the plant A it has got a cryptogams and phanerogams. The cryptogams they consist of uh, thallophyta, bryophyta, pteridophyta whereas the phanerogamae they have the gymnosperms and angiosperms. So what are these uh, phanerogamae? The phanerogamae it consists of two groups. So these are that plants that have a well differentiated bodies with good vascular tissues. They have distinct uh, stem, root, leaves and all this kind of differentiation. But even then they are categorized into two groups. Why? Here these gymnosperms they have naked embryos, naked seeds. Naked seeds. So this group it consists of seeds that are present outside their bodies. So you call it as a naked seed. The seed is outside the body that is outside the fruit. The fruit they do not bear any fruits which contain seeds. They contain they consist of cones on the cones on the cones the seeds are present means the seeds are present outside. So these kind of plants are called as gymnosperms. Sperma means seed, gymno means out. So that they have the characteristic of naked seeds. And how these plants are? They grow up to big trees. They are perennial. They live for number of years. They are evergreen. Evergreen in the sense they do not shed their leaves. Always they will be having the leaves. And they are woody. That means their trunks are very much woody. Which is used as a wood for furniture and all. You see the deodor and pine these two are the examples of this gymnosperms then what are these angiosperms angiosperms here angiosperms means angio closed sperms seeds the seeds are enclosed in a fruit see for example a mango you see that mango consists of one seed inside the mango so the seed is present inside the mango it is protected seed is having a seed coat inside the seed what will be there in case of uh, this Inside the seed, there will be cotyledons. If you open and see a seed, a bean seed, you will find some thick leaf-like structures, two leaf-like structures. And there you will see a baby plant here, embryo. So certain plants, they have the seeds which has got one cotyledon, that is monocot. Monocot means one cotyledon. If the seed contains one cotyledon, you call it as monocot. If the seed contain two cotyledons, dicot. So the angiosperms are divided into two, monocots and dicots. What is this cotyledon? What does it do with? If you see a seed like a bean seed, it will have two cotyledons. If once the seed is germinating, you can find that there, the cotyledons, they become green like leaf-like structures. So it shows that in case of dicot plants, the seed itself consists of a tiny plant in that. The embryo is supported by cotyledons. They contain the stored food. The food is stored in the cotyledons which help the embryo to grow up. How many cotyledons are there? Two cotyledons in case of a dicot. Monocot means only one cotyledon will be there. What are the examples of monocot? All grass plants, rice, wheat, wheat. Jowar, Bajra, all kind of cereal, plants, grass plants, bamboo, all these are monocots. Dicots means you see mango and peas, beans. If you break the seed, if you get two equal halves inside the seed, you consider it as a dicot plant, dicot ladenous plant. So monocots and dicots. So these two come under the group angiosperms. So phenerogamy divided to gymnosperms and angiosperms. In gymnosperm, we find the plants that have a naked seeds. They have cones, cones consist of seeds directly without any fruit. Whereas in angiosperms, they have fruits which enclose the seeds. So again, depend upon the number of cotyledons, they are divided to monocot and dicot. Monocots have only one cotyledon, dicots have two cotyledons to support the growth of embryo. So this is the classification of the kingdom plantae. So next we see the classification of the fifth kingdom, the last kingdom and the biggest kingdom which consists of number of creatures that is the Animalia. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.